swag out them boss. Is that, is that- and welcome to another edition of the Satorian Geek Podcast by Webster Style, where we talk about bow ties, comic books, and everything in between. I'm your host, Webster Style, the man, the voice, the fragrance. And as you see, we're a bit dressed down today. It's a holiday. We're chilling out. We're relaxing. But there's just so much going on that, well, I had to talk to you guys about it. Uh, first up, of course, is, well, you know what it is. It's the download. This week, we have a double download. One is a game that's already out that everyone, almost everyone, except for my Switch players, uh, can play. And the other one's a game that, well, the announcement shocked me. One, because the announcement was made three weeks ago, and I totally missed it. The second, it's a game that I have I've wanted. I've just wanted backwards compatibility, but we're getting a remaster, but I'll talk to you about that one in a second. The first up is, well, The First Descendant. That's the game that's out now. It's on a PS4, 5, Xbox One, S, X, and PC. The First Descendant, Descendant, not Defendant. This is not a court of law, ladies and gentlemen. It's a third-person looter shooter powered by Unreal Engine 5. Become a Descendant. Fight for the survival of humanity. Descendants have unique abilities to tackle both solo and co-op missions. Up to four players use varied mechanics to defeat giant bosses. B. The First Descendant. Now, this is a game from Nexon who is no stranger to um, online co-op games. I believe they did Guild Wars, if I remember correctly. So they have a, a pedigree. And this is a game I've actually downloaded. I haven't gotten a chance to play as of yet. But with the long weekend, I definitely plan on taking advantage of this time and diving into The First Descendant. Now, the second game... It's not a game that's out now, but it's an announcement. And if you watched uh, myself and Ren talk about uh, Still Wakes the Deep and her her experience with the game, you, you will know that she heavily referenced John Carpenter's thing and that sort of feel and vibe. And many of you may not know, there was an, an official video game adaptation sequel uh, to the movie that was made that debuted on the original Xbox and PlayStation 2 and when I got my original OG Xbox the two games I got for that were Shinmu 2 and The Thing and let me tell you I've always wanted and wished for that to become backwards compatible compatible excuse me on my Xbox but now apparently three weeks ago there was an announcement that we are not getting backwards compatibility, but we are getting a remaster. So the thing remasters a faithful restoration of the cult 2002 third person survival horror shooter game inspired by Universal Pictures and filmmaker John Carpenter's genre defining 1982 film The Thing. Night Dive Studios has upgraded its horrifying classic for modern era for the modern era through their provider proprietary. I cannot talk. I'm so excited because this game is something I've been clamoring for for so long. KEX engine for play on current generation gaming devices up to a 4K resolution at 120 frames per second. Improvements to character models, textures, and animations have been made handcrafted by night dive studios with the implementation of an advanced 3d rendering for updated lighting atmospheric effects for suspenseful and disgusting detail remasters that reanimates the thrilling game for modern audiences so in this game uh you go back if you're not familiar with the thing watch it just watch. don't watch the prequel from 2011 don't watch it that's all I got to say about that. Uh, but watch the original 1982 thing uh, from John Carpenter. It's probably on one of those free streaming services. It's been there for a while. Uh, but you go back to the tundra, uh, the frozen Arctic tundra. A mysterious shape-shifting alien has wiped out the crew of the U.S. Outpost 31 research facility to, in the thing remastered. Players step into the boots of Captain J.F. Blake, the leader of United States Army Special Forces Rescue Team, sent to investigate the blood-curling events that transpired in the original thing film. Trapped by the elements and at the risk of... Blake must keep his squad together to survive by gaining their trust and ensuring that their fear and paranoia don't get the best of them or himself. So I saw this and I'm excited. I can't wait. And the fact that it's not just coming for current gen systems, it's coming for, for PS4 and Xbox One as well. Um, I am excited. I don't know when this is coming out. There is no release date. I'm assuming it'll be out at the earliest 
holiday season this year, if not next year, but that's a day one buy for me. Uh, I cannot wait for that. Uh, personally speaking, I'm excited. So that's my download for this week. Next up, we're going to get into my review of Axel F, Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. I feel like when it comes to movies, what's old is new again. Uh, we now in the past, what, three, four years, gotten two Ghostbusters sequels, which seemed like it would never happen. And um, I saw Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in the theaters, and I rather enjoy that there were some things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, especially the fact that I hadn't seen Afterlife, which I saw recently after the fact, so I have a better understanding of some of the characters and where they came from. Uh, but I enjoyed that nonetheless, being a lifelong Ghostbusters fan. Uh, we have so many uh, Bad Boys, uh, Ride or Die uh, came out. And again, I saw Bad Boys for Life, which is really should be the other way around, uh, back when it dropped in 2020. That was actually the last movie I saw before the pandemic. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Bad Boys, Ride or Die. I thought it was very good. Uh, definitely worth my, my ticket price uh, for when I went. So when they announced that they, as in Netflix, announced that there was a fourth Beverly Hills Cop movie uh, dropping, uh, I was, um, you know, a little hesitant. Netflix has a hit or miss record uh, when it comes to movies in general, especially the big budget movies. But the more I saw of this over the past few months, the more I became excited for this movie. And... I just literally, at the time of this recording, I just finished watching it maybe 15 minutes ago. I felt like I was nine years old again. I was nine years old watching Beverly Hills Cop 2 on my father's VCR. Yes, my parents let me watch a whole lot of things I probably shouldn't have watched in my formative years. It's kind of why I'm crazy now. But... It felt like a Beverly Hills Cop movie. I can't believe it has been 30 years since Beverly Hills Cop 3. I don't remember Beverly Hills Cop 3, and there's a good reason for that. It was absolutely horrible. This is a movie that I sat there watching, and I said to myself, especially after just after watching Bad Boys Ride or Die a few weeks ago, why is this not in the movie theater? Like, this is a movie I want to see in the movie theater. It was... You talk about nostalgia movies, trying to capture the feel and sort of appeal of their predecessors. This did it 100%. Everything down from the music to the pacing to the acting uh, with uh, all the old characters returning, the introduction of the new characters, uh, Gordon Levitt um, is great in this. And I forget the woman that plays Axe Foley's daughter. She is fine, but that's another conversation. Um, Kevin Bacon handed up as, as the main villain. And you knew he was the main villain. Look, you met him maybe 10 minutes in the, in the film. You knew he was the main villain. <laughs> and they, they, look, there's no spoilers. You know, you already know he's the bad guy. That's it. It was a Beverly Hills Cop movie. I felt like I was watching Beverly Hills Cop 2, straight up. And if I remember correctly, Beverly Hills Cop 2 was was directed by Tony Scott. Uh, so, um, rest in peace. So it had that same vibe, that same sort of pacing uh, and excellent use of music to set the mood. This, this being on Netflix... It was the service of this movie. Not not to not Netflix, but this should have had a theatrical release. And I think it would have done very well uh, based on how good this movie is. It's one of those things where I don't know what Paramount was thinking by not wanting to put this movie out. It was that good for me. For me. Me as someone who is a, a child of the 80s, who remembers the first two, who remembers how good they were. This was such a... A lot of times I, I hate paint by numbers sort of thing. But that's when it's like devoid of any sort of fun or originality. This was a quote-unquote paint-by-numbers Beverly Hills Cop movie, but that was in a very good way. Eddie Murphy was his Axel Foley, and a lot of his things have been hit or miss lately. It was nice seeing him in his role. He just he just really killed it, in my opinion. Uh, Judge Reinhold, it was nice seeing him again. I can't remember the last time I saw him in anything. Does he even act regularly anymore? I don't know. 
Um, Brunson Pinchot back as Surge. It was that whole segment was just really funny. They had a lot of callbacks to the greatest hits uh, of the series, but it worked. It worked so well. A lot of times nowadays, when you have movies that are based on these nostalgia properties, who just go back and just try to redo things that have been done before, a lot of times they fall flat. I even felt that when watching Afterlife. Uh, while I enjoyed it, and I wish I, wish I would have saw it in the theater, I think I have a better appreciation for it. Seeing Frozen Empire, there are a lot of things that felt like callbacks to the original Ghostbusters that just kind of fell flat to me. Um, like I understood why, and and maybe I'm not the person that should really be entertained by that. And maybe I really should, since I'm someone who saw Ghostbusters as a kid in the 80s, like opening weekend, I think we went anyway. But it fell flat. The callbacks in this movie had me cracking up uh, from Surge to even the the scene right before the end credits of such a callback to the uh, first movie. It was Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, and I hate the name. Uh, it should have just been Beverly Hills Cop 4 and called it a day. But if you are a fan, particularly of the first two movies, this is the movie that you'll definitely like. Uh, my only drawback with this, I think that it maybe ran 15, 20 minutes longer than it should have. Uh, but I was okay with that. It, it, at the end of the day, it felt like a Beverly Hills Cop movie. And that's all that anybody could really ask for. If you have watched one of the first two movies, again, especially the second one. I, I think the ses- second one really defined what the series could be. Uh, more so than the first one. Uh, this is one of those times where I think the sequel outdid the first one as far as from a, a thematic standpoint. And I, I attribute a lot of that to director Tony Scott. Um, if I do have that correct, I don't think he did the first one. But this is definitely a movie that is a worthy uh, sequel to those original two movies. Again, act like Beverly Hills Cop didn't, didn't exist. Come on, in. amusement park and everything. Really? Really? Um, totally out of character for Axel and everything that was going on. But yeah, so that's my take on Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. Um, I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was just a really good movie. Now, let's go to, of course, the Franks of the Day. And you're about to see uh, a, a wardrobe change. Now it's time for the fragrance of the week. And this week's fragrance is one that I have heard a lot about over the past year or so i've seen men and women really enjoy this fragrance and it's one that i actually don't have the full bottle but i did get a sample sent to me to get to check it out and it is uh i'm butcher this bede al oud or oud for glory from latafa it is to my understanding a dupe of a popular Inicio fragrance, which name escapes me at the moment. It is described as having oriental, woody, spicy, sweet, and smoky elements with top notes of bergamot, black currant, and pink pepper, heart notes of oud, caramel, and peony, and then base notes of amber, patchouli, and raspberry. And one of the things I got as soon as I sprayed it um, early in the morning, I got that oud. I got that smoky sort of oud note that is very familiar to me with um, oud intense from Latafa. Very similar. And I got a lot of that in the beginning. And it was a very clean, sort of powdery clean. So I attribute a lot of that to the amber. That's what I got initially. But after wearing this throughout the day, after one, I love wearing fragrance like this in the heat because you tend to get a really good breakdown of the notes uh, throughout the day, especially in my case today, I was going in and out of the heat. So I got to smell different aspects of it. Um, I got to smell the sweetness subtle, but I still got to smell that sweetness of the caramel. Uh, the spice of the pepper the patchouli and even the raspberry to a degree and the more and more the day wears on i I get that raspberry i get that fruitiness that fresh fruity sweetness almost like a not quite but 
the raspberry fragrance, and I think of that, I think of Mont Blanc Individual. And so I get a sort of a raspberry, it's kind of muted, but a sort of fresh fruitiness um, with that mixed in with the base of the amber patchouli and that smokiness still just lasts throughout. I understand why uh, many have talked about how much they enjoy this fragrance. And I'm not sure of the price, but I'm pretty sure you're going to find this bad boy for about 30 bucks or less on Amazon. And it's definitely a good price for that. It smells really good. The more I smell it, the more I'm smelling the caramel, the more I'm smelling the raspberry. I feel as though the bergamot and the black currant really get drowned out, um, even though that's the top. I don't get much of that at all, that sort of freshness. And maybe it's mixed in with, with my nose is mixed in more with that amber because I really smell that uh, in the beginning that gives me that sense of freshness, not so much of a fruity freshness, but just a, a, a fresh powdering, powderiness. And I don't get that as much now. Uh, it's mostly smelling it again, and, and that's not something that lasts in that regard throughout the day. But that initial spring, I definitely, definitely smelled that. So that's my take on Ooh for Glory from Matafa. Check it out. So good. And we're back. As you see, I'm back to what you saw me in before. Uh, this is one of those times that I, I really just, the fragrance unto itself is just, I really love it. And I want to wear it some more just to really get a better understanding of the complexity of it. Because I will say that it's a little bit better from a, a linear standpoint than some of the other little type of fragrances that I've experienced. So, but, you know, thank you for joining me as always. And, you know, if you can support in other ways, feel free. Make sure you check out Basil and Sage. Visit basilandsage.com and use the code Sartorio and Geek 10 to get 10% off your first box. I love those subscription boxes. I've gotten some really awesome things uh, from the boxes over the past year or so. Um, also, if you're looking to step your, your game up, trying to be more dapper, you know, get that collar popping and other things, check out Go Tyler's. Use the code Webster Style to get 10% off your first purchase. If you're looking for the luxurious beard oil something to get your beard nice tight shiny check out beard organics use the code webster style to get uh 10 15 percent excuse me 50 percent off of your purchase of 50 dollars or more also check us out on patreon for just a little price of one dollar a month you can support us by being an associate producer and of course we're still not done but pete and pedro check out their line of fragrances and all their products use the code in the show notes or the link in the show notes to get 10 percent off your first purchase then lva hill coffee my coffee choice every single morning if i'm not going to starbucks uh check them out use the code webster style for 10 percent off of your first purchase uh the coffee's great and it's very reasonably priced too and it's all ethically and sustainably sourced from south america and the couple, David and his wife, are just absolutely phenomenal who run the business. And they're just so passionate. And I love them. And I love just talking with them and learning more and more about what they do and what kind of impact they're having uh, with small farmers in uh, Central and South America. So support 10% off Webster Style with your code. And then if maybe coffee's not just be, maybe you need something else that's a bit more of a pick me up uh i suggest try w energy drink get 10 percent off your first purchase by using the code webster man at checkout now again i thank you for all of your time so you know how you can find me check me out every week over on nerds of the world with sean mongo the voiceover king and the legend Kriya P talking wrestling every single week on KFAB Baby. Also check me out with my man Brian Saff as we talk the latest and greatest video game releases on the NRW checkpoint. So check me out there in Nerds of the World with NRW every single week. Of course, you can find me here and all the plethora of things uh, Webster Style here on YouTube. Make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe. But also WebsterStyle.com, Instagram, Webster Style, Twitter, or X, Webster Style, and TikTok underscore Webster style. Show ideas, questions, comments. Just want to get in contact with me. Maybe you want to be on the show. Let me know. Info at WebsterStyleMagazine.com. Thank you again. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your listening ear. Remember, stay safe out there. Swag out there, boss. Is that, is that bow tie paisley? 
Ah, you're killing. Ooh, that's it.